Hey guys, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter this July 3rd, 2015 for Basic Sorgonomics. And uh, we're going to keep it light here. I talked about the drive-in theater yesterday. And I thought, uh, you know what? I, I don't, like, well, right at the moment, I don't have a place to put movie reviews, I guess. I, yeah, I guess I could do that as a basic sorgonomics extra or something like that um or we could just do it right here because this is the uh podcast about whatever the freak i want to talk about so uh you can check out everything else sorgatron.com please sign up for my creator's newsletter and uh we're having a lot of fun this week a lot talking to a lot of great people so please join us for that kind of stuff i saw terminator uh this week as i mentioned yesterday in the in the drive-in uh uh, conversation which really got me to um think about and as we do most often when a big property like this comes out with another movie and you're wondering like I, i'm reading these articles and i i don't realize and i realize that every article that i read about terminator is going to be like well here's another unoriginal reboot here we go guys and and i and i think i think then people read that and be like and 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 adopt that you know we we kind of talked about um on Indie Mayhem show this week, uh, fans and their interpretations and how they kind of create an entire narrative that isn't really there. Uh, for everybody out there that gets on Twitter, has a bully pulpit on a blog, website, whatever, and says, oh, these Terminator movies and whatever, and blah, 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 and original, right? Uh, I think there's like a good number of people, as you'll probably see in the numbers you saw for Jurassic Park breaking records or whatever, you know. Uh, that nostalgia works and the people want to see that and you can't blame a movie studio for paying off on a shore bet like this okay um and and i think you need to put those in the context of where they belong i i think uh i enjoyed the terminator movie i very much enjoyed the term like okay i enjoyed the terminator movie to the point where when I say I enjoyed a Transformers movie, I was really trying to like that Transformers movie. <laughs> I that is a part of my childhood and and I just want to accept it for what it is and like that was an interesting take. I wish they'd do something different, but I got comic books to read that are much better about that. <laughs> I have a cartoon to watch that is just tremendous if you haven't watched Transformers Prime and you're a Transformers fan. Even if you're a GoBots fan, Wisen up. Go watch the Transformers stuff. Um, anyways, t- but but look at the Terminator thing. And, and actually, I don't know why I found myself. I, I was I was I was intrigued by it, or maybe because I knew I was going to go to the drive-in and check it out this week. Um, but the day before, I read an article talking about it. It was kind of a review, and it did uh, talk. And, and like, I'm trying not to get very spoilery here, but. Um, it, so so bear with me if you really just want to go in blind you might want to just kind of skip this one for now but uh, i think most know if you read a synopsis they go back to 1984 so they pretty much recreate what happened in the first terminator uh situationally but something has changed there's a guy there's a terminator that's been there forever um and uh for reasons which i which some of the reasons i don't think become entirely clear but Supposedly, we'll have two more movies to complete that cycle. Um, there is a there's a certain sense of timey wiminess, and I say that I probably would have said that even if there wasn't a Doctor Who in the movie, uh, Matt Smith. And I discovered this like you know just a little bit beforehand um, that he was in the movie, which is fantastic. And the role that they uh, they put him in, and and that this is a time travel movie, and a time travel movie that suffers from um a paradox effect and uh just like what the heck is he talking about you know when they try to explain it and and really kind of create the science around it but when they when when there's the point where there's the reveal of this is why this happened in timelines and such and the other thing it did feel like an episode of doctor who at at a certain point so um i'm waiting for that crossover to happen crossover to happen so uh you know uh, the good doctor, the reason he regenerates is actually because he's been Skynet the whole time, maybe. I don't know. I, You know, I think that's going to... I would love to see that crossover. Maybe Dark Horse can do that um, kind of thing or, or whoever. I don't know who does the Doctor Who comics. I've read a few of them, but I, I, I can't remember for the life of me who the uh, uh, promoter of that one is. Or not the promoter, the um, um, publisher of that one is. Promoter, publisher. So, well, to jump from wrestling to movies and comics, I kind of get things jumbled up in uh, my terminology, I guess. But anyways... One of the impressive things about this is um, they recreate the early 
scenes of the original Terminator movie because there's a it's going by just as you expect, right? And uh, I hadn't seen the Terminator movie for a while. I mean, the original Terminator movie is the one you get excited to go back and watch. I feel like it's from 1984, and you know the pacing of movies back then was so different, so very different that that it just kind of slogs along. And this does this does to a certain point too. But uh, that they recreated uh, really shot for shot, it feels like and it's obviously reshot. You know, it's with the new actors. It's with CG Arnold, you know, uh, stuff like that. You know, it's going to look it's, it's in 4K now versus whatever film grade they, they had back then. But uh, but but that was impressive. And, and, and I didn't you know, I didn't follow along to say, oh, then this other thing happens. I thought I was like, oh, everything's just in 1984. That seems like it's going to be an odd movie to me, but it, it, not entirely. And again, you know, kind of reading this article and realizing the director of this was the director of Thor: The Dark World, um, I guess I, I have the, I have similar feelings about both movies. I thought both movies were good. They were dark. They were you know this, that, and the other thing. Um, but uh, but I, I think this really served. And 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 I find myself kind of looking back, you know, one kind of looking back at the old movies, try to see where they fit. Try not to do that too much. You'll hurt yourself. Um, this was also kind of a soft reboot. Much in the way that Star Trek does. Um, if you guys remember in Star Trek, there was there's a point basically where the villain spoilers for Star Trek. I guess it's been out for several years. It's been a sequel, both very good. Uh, yeah, the the villain goes back in time and changes something, and uh, that makes an alternative timeline. And now we can do things that we couldn't do in the first um, in the in in the original Star Trek. In the original timeline, you're not worried about destroying that entire thing because even the movies just directly connected with the shows. It was all one big universe, and now we have an entire new universe and it's kind of new motivations for the characters because some things have changed for them. In this case, a very similar situation. Uh, something different happened to Sarah Connor when she was younger, so things have changed for her. She is a different person. Very different person if you go back and watch the 1984 Terminator movie. By the way, it's called The Terminator. Rest are like Terminator 2, Terminator 3, da da da, da you know, yeah. Terminator Salvation. Let's forget about that one. Um, anyways. But, you know, I, I, what's nice about Terminator, <laughs> nice, you know, versus Highlander is just different for no damn reason. One of the most awfully mistreated franchises of all time as a huge Highlander fan, myself and my sister, Maybe we're the only ones left. Makes me that's what got me in the queen. But anyways, um, you can have the rest of these exist, and they just didn't happen. Uh, he wasn't Christian Bale for a little bit. Uh, Sarah Connor Chronicles um, exists in a fashion because now you got to imagine that um, it's much like I mean it can't be any any more any it's got to be far less complicated than whatever they're doing in Marvel Comics right now or. Or DC, where they're converging, um, or, or whatever the Secret Wars, and and and, and everything's just kind of mashing together, right? There's a different world where all this stuff happened. I was like, great. Now your user doesn't know all the rules and all the experiences that this Spider-Man had because you just mashed it together. Um, they made a giant leap too with this, um, as far as how he gets the message to change things. I'm not going to leave that to you, but that was a little disconnect for me. Again, you can make your own rules when you're talking about time travel, I suppose. But, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of living in a world where this exists. And now we're getting into a world where, just like um, just like uh, Star Trek started losing me, where I'm like, yeah, we have like people that jump through time and, uh, and, and kind of police things there. And now we're just introducing new elements that just don't belong here when we're talking about Enterprise. Um, it feels like time travel is becoming too easy in the Terminator universe, and uh, I, I, I think that makes it. Well, it's great because you could just write things to work. <laughs> so, so it could be a lazy writing thing, but it also can make things a little bit more interesting as well. And uh, I don't know. I think they did a good job. I think if you're a Terminator fan of the good old days uh, of the of the franchise, I want to forget about Rise of the Machines and Salvation in the 2000s. This is fine. It's absolutely fine. I, I had fun with it. I think you'll benefit if you go to a theater with a nice, uh, nice screen, nice uh, sound system. There's plenty of your B 
big movie explosions, you know. These are the movies that I go to the theater for. For absolutely, it, it doesn't have to be a great plot. I just want to go see awesome stuff blowing up. I don't say it. I'd be back, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Transformers uh, exploding stuff, you know. I mean, at least that when I mentioned the Transformers before, but but in that case, it is very satisfying to see giant robot on a big screen. Uh, just just destroying things or punching other robots or riding dinosaur robots. It's just satisfying in that very visceral American way of blow S up. I'm trying not to share. I'm trying not to swear on this one. Um, anyways, let me know what you think. Uh, Terminator, did you check it out? Are you going to go check it out? What do you think about movies like this? Jurassic World, also pretty okay. Pretty much step by step with the other ones. You know what I mean? It's just like Nothing's going to go wrong this time. And then it just goes wrong in the worst possible way. Uh, but the dinosaur in San Francisco in the second one. I think it was San Francisco. That was my favorite point of all the Jurassic Park movies. Other than the original kind of like, you know, points. But with that, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Have a good uh, holiday. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.